So we're at the point in our application where we need a backend. We've built this form on the front end, but we have nowhere to submit our data to and save it to a database. So that's what we're going to be working on in this video, starting with initializing Prisma. Now Prisma is what we use to connect to our database. Um, Postgres, it will manage reading to it and writing to it, and it will also manage migrating the schema. And now schema is basically just a fancy way for saying, what tables does our database have? Uh, what does it look like? What's its structure? So what we're going to do is get out of um, here, go into our console and get out of yarn dev if you're doing it. And we're gonna run a command to initialize Prisma. I have all the Prisma commands we're going to be using inside of our package JSON, all the ones that start with db colon. Now Prisma has been changing its migration API quite a bit lately. So if you're gonna build a new app from scratch, these might not be the exact commands you run, but the concepts are all the same. So no worries there. Here we're about teaching concepts, not the exact syntax to copy and paste. So we're gonna start by running yarn db init, yarn db init, and that's going to create us a new folder called Prisma. So I suggest you go through and read this documentation, but we're just gonna hop over here to our code and we've got this new Prisma folder with two things. The first is a .env, which is not committed, and it contains a database URL, which points to a dummy one. So we're gonna go into our .env.local, where we set up um, a connection to our Heroku database, our Heroku Postgres database, and we're just gonna copy this over so that they both contain the same thing. And it also contains a schema.prisma, and this is where it contains the structure of our database. Right now, it just tells Prisma basically how to connect to our database and what type it is. So this is what we're going to work on now. But what I wanted to show, and this is not requirement for the course, but there's a really cool app called Table Plus, which is free. Um, I know it runs on a Mac for sure, maybe on Windows as well, but it allows you to connect your database and poke around to run SQL, etc. So what we can do if we wanna to connect to our database from here is just do connection from URL. It will take what's in your clipboard and paste it in. We can give it a name. So this is the house course. Um, test it, make sure it connects okay. Click connect. And in here we can see basically an empty database. So there's not too much going on. Now I have one migration table from when I was previously playing around, but you might not have any tables at all. And that's okay, that's what our goal is right now. We wanna create a houses table to store information about all the houses we're building. So to do that, we're gonna come back to our schema.prisma and we're gonna declare uh, a table. So this is model house. So our um, table will be called not house, but houses, we'll get to that in a sec, but we're gonna to start to declare all of the columns that it has. So it's gonna have an ID column of type int. This is going to be our ID and its default value is going to be auto increment. So that it will start at one and just start counting up. We'll have our user ID. So this is going to store the user ID that comes from uh, Firebase auth. It comes to us as a string. Now I am going to have the, the name of this column be user underscore ID. This may be just be a weird thing because I've been doing Rails develop, Ruby on Rails development for a long time, but I sort of like my database columns to be underscore like this. So in JavaScript world, we'll interact with it like this, but in the actual table itself, it will look like this. So we're gonna have an image, which is a string. We're going to have a latitude, which is going to be a float a longitude, also a float, and then an address string. Number of bedrooms will be an integer. And then we're gonna have two timestamp fields, uh, created at, which is date time, and its default value is going to be now. And we're gonna do this same mapping thing where the name will be created underscore at. So now we're gonna do the same thing for updated at. So updated, at is a date time as well. It's, the, it's actually the exact same. So default of now, map of name updated at. So the last thing we're going to do is just to declare an index. An index helps the database look up records efficiently. 
and we're going to add an index on this um, user ID here. We don't have to worry about ID, that's the primary key, so it automatically has an index. I often like to have indexes on what's referred to as foreign keys. So I am going to index this column here. So we do at at index, we tell it what, um, what column to index, and then we can give it a name. So houses.userID is what we'll call the index. Last thing I wanna do, see how we've been mapping columns like this? We can actually map the name of the, the whole table itself to something else. So we're gonna call this table houses. I don't know why this is maybe another Rails thing, but I like to have my tables be the plural version of it because that's what they store and to be all um, lower case. So with our schema in place, what we're going to do is generate a new migration. So there's a command in package.json um, called yarn db migrate new that we're going to run. And it's going to ask us, what do you want to call this migration? So we're going to call this create houses like this. And it gives us some information about um, how to basically execute this migration. First, let's just go take a look. So it creates us a migrations folder and it creates us a time stamped migration. This is really cool in, in Prisma. It basically tells you um, who created it at what time and what's going to happen. So what's going to happen is we're going to be creating a table called houses. So user ID, image, latitude, longitude, just making sure I spelled it all right. Look good. And then it's gonna create an index. It shows you the diff, like what's the previous version of the database. After you run the migration, what's it going to look like now? Migrations are all about taking your database from one state to another. Um, so once you've confirmed that everything's good, you can come back and you can run the command db migrate up. So yarn db migrate up. And what this will do is actually execute the migration. So the first one is generating it. Now we're executing it and running it. So if we were to go back to table plus and just do a refresh, um, the migration table now has information about the one migration that was run and we have a houses table. So there's no data in it yet. It's got ID, user ID, image, latitude, longitude, address, etc. It's empty, but this is great. This is the structure. So in the future, if you want to take a look at the content of your database, pop in here and check that out. So the next step with Prisma if, is we have to generate what's called a Prisma client. And that's done with yarn Prisma generate. I just have the short form DB generate. So we're going to run that yarn DB generate. And what this does is it actually creates um, it creates a node, like a local node module that you then import from, but the node module it creates has all of the types that your database has. So Prisma is a fully typed um, tool that, that allows you to query your database. So it knows what columns it has, it knows what tables it has, etc. So running that um, generate command, I'm not seeing my node modules here because it's hidden in VS Code, but it would generate a Prisma client that's specific to your database, unique database um, types. So what we're going to do now with all of this in place is we're going to go and we're going to create a Prisma client in our JavaScript code. So if we go into the SRC folder, I've got a file here called Prisma. So this is has one import. So this is importing from the Prisma client that we just created with the previous command. It looks like one that you would have installed from NPM, but no, this is the one that was generated just for you. And it's got Prisma client. So what we're going to do is we're going to say const Prisma is equal to a new Prisma client. And then we can give it some options. I like seeing the queries that are running in my console down here as it's sort of executing GraphQL. So we're going to say that we want the login to be query, info, and warn, just so we get all of the information. You might want to change the, the logging if you're running in development or production. You could do that by looking at the process.env.nodeenv. So you could say something like, if it's development, then do this. Otherwise, I want no logging. Whatever you decide to do. 
Um, we're just going to leave it doing that for everyone. So now we're going to export two things. We're going to export Prisma, the, the client that we just created, and we're also going to export the Prisma client um, from here because we're going to use this later for typing to, to tell um, whatever code is using this Prisma client what type of data to expect. So we can't really execute any commands on this yet. Um, that's what we're going to be doing in later videos as we connect to this via our GraphQL API. But this is the work required to set up Prisma. So if we were to look at our git, what files have changed. So the only one in our sort of previous code base that changed was this prisma.typescript. But we also have this new Prisma um, folder that has the files we looked at. So most importantly, I would say is this Prisma schema that now has a, a representation of what our database structure looks like. Okay, let's move on to the next video. We're going to initialize our GraphQL server. Take care.